Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Now let everybody sing aloud that. Come on, everybody. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. We want to welcome Facebook family, YouTube. This is the Living Water World Ministries International service this morning. I am Bishop Dr. Samuel Roy Johnson, Sr., and we're so glad to be in the house of God. I know it's cold outside, and we're trying to stay warm, but we thank God for Jesus. As James is playing, we want to thank God and pray for those, uh, Deacon Porter, uh, Sister Cheryl made it in here this morning, amen. Pray for Patricia Brown. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to pray, pray for the New Life Church in Middletown, Ohio. They lost a pastor. He went on to glory. Uh, pastor Charles McKinney. But we want them to know that we're praying for them. I want to let everybody know I'm praying for my sons. Hallelujah. That are out there in Arizona. Pastor Nasir and Abra. Pastor Jason Jones and Chris. We want to lift them up in prayer. Because prayer is needed. And I want you to know that all things are working together for the good. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word of God, but let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you honor, glory, and praise. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the anointing. We bind up every devil, every demon, everything that is not like. We bind up depression this morning. We bind up confusion. We bind up sickness and cast it to a dark, dry place. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Everybody standing to your feet right now. We're going to read the word of the living God. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. And when I leave here, I'm going to have more faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, devil, it's over. I'm blessed and not stressed. I'm a winner. Deuteronomy. Chapter 10, uh, verses 8. Hallelujah. And we want to also say happy birthday to Tanya. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She makes sure, she, her and her sons make sure everything is on YouTube and everything. So we thank God for it. Now listen, uh, I'm, I'm coming out of the, the, the New International this morning. In verse number 8, it says, um, Deuteronomy 10, verse number 8. It says, At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister and to pronounce blessings in his name, as they still do today. I'm going to say this again uh, in the New International Version. It says, at that time, 
the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the ark of the covenant of the Lord. To stand before the Lord to minister and to pronounce blessings in his name. As they still do today. I'm going to use for a subject this morning. It's good to be a blessing. It's good to be a blessing. <clears throat> it's good to be a blessing. God had chose the Levites. And he used the Levites were the priest. And it was up to the priest to hear God's voice. So that they could be a blessing to the people. And so what God is doing in this season, even at Christmas time, God wants to use the men and women of God to be a blessing. And when you trust what God is doing, it will be a blessing to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. I once heard it put like this. Blessings in the ancient Hebrew meant anointed to win. Empowered to overcome and impossible to curse, especially during the turbulent times in the world experiencing today. We need to walk in the blessings of the Lord. So number one, we need to walk in the blessings of the Lord. But tell somebody, it's good to be a blessing. See, one scripture that kept running through my mind was that Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, 10, verse number 8. It's where it said that God appointed the priest to announce blessings in his name. In other words, God spoke to the preachers. And their words were to the avenue through the which the blessing of the Lord would come upon the people. So God has given us a duty as men and women of God. As we stand in the office of his priest, that God said for the people to get blessed, we got to speak it over their lives. We got to talk to them and let them know the blessing is on its way. You may have been through some hard times and you may have been hurt and you may have been sick, but the blessing of God is on its way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell somebody it's good to be a blessing. See, what stood out to me the most was the fact that God had set up a system through which people could receive his blessings. God uses people to reach people. And the priests were set up to pronounce the blessing over the people. And so when the blessing comes over the people, you can walk, you can run in the presence of the Most High God. Somebody shout hallelujah. But the very fact... That he said a priest to bless is evidence enough that God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed. And it may not look like it. It may not even feel like it. But not only did the Levites pronounce the blessing in his name, Jesus actually did the same thing. Jesus went about healing and he went about blessing people. I don't know about you, but if you woke up this morning, you're blessed. If you were able to get in your car and come to church, you're blessed. If you were able to put your clothes on this morning, you're blessed. If you were able to look in the mirror and brush your teeth, you bless. Ultimately, he lifted up his hands and he blessed him. And so as I stand here this morning, I lift up my hands and I wave my hands on y'all because I want you to be blessed this morning. Uh, what am I saying? God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be healed. His blessing is released through declaration. Here are some important keys to accessing the blessings of God. Number one, be convinced that God wants to bless you and God wants you to bless you now. Somebody shout hallelujah. See, I, I, I'm not sitting around here, but be convinced that God wants to bless you. And if you and if you stand against God, you stand against your blessing. I'm not walking against my blessing, but I am waiting for my blessing. Sometimes if God is for you, who can be against you? 
Listen, I know God is for us because he has brought us a mighty long way. It may not look like you're supposed to look, but I know greater is coming. Many times we hinder what we receive from God because we don't believe we're worthy. See, when you stop thinking that you're not worthy enough to get the blessing of God, then the blessing stops. The Bible says, so a man thinketh, so is he. Hallelujah. But when I lift up my hands and I start praising God, I realize that I'm blessed. I realize that I'm highly favored. And I realize that greater is coming. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, uh, blessing is the will of God for your life. It's God's will that you be blessed. It's God's will that you have enough. It's God's will that you don't suffer 24-7. Somebody said, so you can expect it. Tell somebody, I expect it. It's here right now. The blessing is here right now. Uh, but let's, re let's revisit the ancient Hebrew definition. God said, number one, we're anointed to win. Look at somebody say, you're anointed to win. You're empowered to overcome. And it, you're in, it's impossible for you to be cursed. See, when the blessing of God gets on you, your life gets enriched. When the blessings of God get on you, Sister Cheryl, your life becomes enriched. Let me share something with you. You know how you, you find out about people that they're really blessed? Is when they tell you what God done done for them. Unexpected blessings will come into your life at an unopportune time. They'll reach you. They'll bless you. Here you are. And I'm not going to say the woman's name. But a furnace went out. A hot water heater blew up. Furnace went out. It's cold outside. But what happened was, she said, Bishop, I'm a tither. She said, I believe in sowing into the kingdom. And so what she did, she said, see, you don't never know how God going to bless you. But see, the way God blesses you, one way he may bless you another way. And it's up to God how God wants to bless you. You can't tell God how to bless you and where it's coming from. It'll come from unopportune uh, uh, people or sources. But what happens is, is when God uses the world to bless you. Somebody say scratch off. Somebody say scratch off. Wow. See, it's good to be a blessing. You never know. See, God is using some of y'all as scratch offs. God is using you for a scratch off and let you know your number is coming up. Come on, somebody, stay with me. God will use a scratch off. And just think about this. God used a scratch off to get you $25,000. Somebody say hallelujah for the scratch off. And the first thing this woman did with a scratch off, she paid her tithes. And then she bought her new furnace. Then she bought a new water heater for a house. You can't tell God how to bless you. God will know how to bless you when he want to bless you. God ain't forgot about you tithing, about you sowing, about you blessing the man or woman of God. God sees all of that. Know what the blessing is so you can expect it. Hallelujah. When the blessing of God gets on you, your life gets enriched. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and added no sorrow. 
My God, my God. I know God is a good God. It ain't my business to ask you where your money come from. I thank God that you got enough sense to want to pay your tithes and do what thus saith the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, 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 the blessing is released through declaration. That's what the priests were anointed, appointed to do on us someday. First Peter 2 and 9 says, we are of a royal priesthood. When you are of a royal priesthood, and you know, look at somebody, do, 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 do this for me. Do this for me. Everybody do this this morning. You on, you, you on television watching me. What? God is using you as a scratch off. God getting ready to bless you. God, God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. That's the title of the message. It, it's, it's good to be a blessing to someone. Make things happen for somebody else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, that's what the priests were appointed to do. They were a royal priesthood. The blessing, hallelujah, the blessing is released through the presence of God. Right. You can't get nothing unless you get it through God. Uh -huh. And I tell you what, I feel so blessed this morning because you didn't have to be here this morning. Right. You could have been home. You could have been somewhere else. But it's good to be a blessing. It's good when you can give the word of God to God's people so they can stand firm on God's word. But that's why we're a blessing. We're blessing the people that are listening to us on, 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 on social media, on Facebook, on YouTube. It's good to be a blessing because blessings begin to open up the doors so that you can be more blessed. Amen. But when you hold on to God's hand, which is unchanging, God, God don't forget about what you've done done. You can praise him even in the morning. You can praise him even in the noonday. You can praise him in the midnight hour. And you can't put no timing on the blessing of God. He might bless you in the midnight hour. He might bless you while you sleep. He might bless you while you at work. He might bless you in, in your car. But whatever the Lord do, it's all right. The main thing is we got to be a blessing to each other. We got to pray for one another. Are we going to fall out every once in a while? We're going to get a little upset about things in a little while. But God said, I'm going to work this thing out for you. He said, if you look to the hills from which cometh your help, your help comes from the Lord. He that watcheth over Israel doesn't slumber nor sleep. But I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mind. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. For the Lord is with me. And as I go through the valley of dry bones, God still breathes on me. God still talks to me. The healing power of the Holy Ghost is still here. And no matter what, I still, when I've been down, he pulls me up. And when I've been too far up, he pulls me down. He lets me know that he placed my feet on solid ground. I don't know about you this morning, but I feel the anointing of God. I don't know what you feel, but I feel God's presence this morning. And when you have the presence of God that's in your life, things begin to change. If you look to the left... And if you look to the right, all you got to do is trust in what God is saying. His word, it goes before you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that comes against you, you have the right to condemn. It's a blessing. It's good to be a blessing. And be able to smile about it. 
That way when I reach in my pocket and I give somebody something, and I pay my tithes and my offerings and my seed, me an elder, we know it's going to bless somebody. And God, all God wants to do is bless you. I say to you this morning, I want you to be blessed. I want you to hold on to God's unchanging hand. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, say these words. Say, Lord God, God, come into my life. I repent of my sins. I know I haven't done everything right. But Lord, if you saved me, if you filled me, I promise that everything will fall into place. I believe in Romans 10, 9 and 10. If I confess with my mouth that Jesus died on the cross, but God will raise him from the dead. Now I know I'm saved. I'm saved. There's been a lot of sickness going around, but we speak healing this morning. We bless you this morning. And we let you know that all things are possible. All things are possible. Elder. Glory, glory, glory. glory. Don't you like these impromptus? I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, but praise God anyhow. Our God is a good God. All the time. And a lot of times we pray to get out of a situation. But Paul never prayed to divert you from your trials and tribulation. He prayed to give you strength to go through. And a lot of times we pray, oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. But when we think about that and we start to just to praise him in our trials and our tribulations, when we don't feel like it. Have you ever just prayed and you really didn't feel like it? But you get in your prayer closet anyway and you start to pray and then the Holy Ghost start to fill you up. He fills you up and you just can't get it out quick enough. So when we stop thinking about our situation and start thinking about praising him, like I say, he may not change that situation, but he will change your attitude to go through that situation. He changed your attitude to go through that situation. Hurt is never easy. Grief 